I'm Matt Willis, Public Health Officer from Marin County with an update for July 21st. This week, an important study was published in the journal Nature about how our genes, our genetic makeup, influences our COVID-19 risk. The findings provide important insights that I'm going to summarize. One of the basic mysteries of COVID-19 has been the variability and the unpredictability of severity of illness among infected people. It's never really been clear why if you take two people, same age and medical conditions, infected at the same time, that one ends up in the ICU while the other might have no symptoms at all. Now, more than three years into our experience with this virus, studies are beginning to describe why some people escape illness by looking at our genes. Since our focus here is on genetics, here's a quick reminder from high school biology class. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, one from each of our biological parents. These make up our genes, which are basically the instruction manual for making our body, including our immune system. We share most of the same genes, but have some subtle differences between us, which is why we don't all look the same. There are subtle differences in our genes that make up our immune systems as well so we don't all fight off infections equally well. It turns out the most important part of our genes in terms of immune system function is located on the sixth chromosome and is called the HLA, or human leukocyte antigen region. We already know differences in HLA genes between people helps determine how well they fare with other infections, including HIV and hepatitis C. So researchers naturally looked at the HLA region to understand the genetics of COVID-19 vulnerability. In this week's Nature article, they looked at three studies. The largest and most important of these had a simple design. About 40,000 people voluntarily reported their symptoms through an app after testing positive for COVID-19. This naturally led to a wide range of people across the spectrum of symptoms, from totally asymptomatic to severe disease. Then these people provided blood samples, and they looked for differences in the HLA genes between those with no symptoms and those with more serious symptoms. And here's what they found. One HLA subtype, a gene that only some people have, stood out as protective. It's called HLA-B15.1, and people with this gene were 2.5 times less likely to have symptoms than people who didn't have it. And remember, your chromosomes are paired, one from each parent, so you have two versions of every one. The study found that those people lucky enough to have two versions of the B15 gene on both of their six chromosomes were actually eight times less likely to get sick with COVID. The two other studies summarized in Nature also found the same strong association with this one HLA type and protection for serious illness. So what does this mean? While we don't know enough yet to determine causality, there's definitely a strong association between this one particular gene and a lack of symptoms among infected people. Knowing that genetics plays a role in who gets very sick and who doesn't, and honing in on the genes at play is real progress and opens doors for potential new therapies. Once we better understand the mechanisms at work, that is how exactly the body protects itself so effectively in people with certain genes, we can work to mimic this or amplify this response with new therapies and vaccines. Similar studies are underway to clarify the determinants of risk for long COVID and are showing promising results for identifying certain genetic factors behind long COVID risk. It's also important to know what these studies do not mean. Risk for severe outcomes in the public is still most strongly based on underlying factors like age, medical condition, vaccination, and the social factors we've all been talking about. When early in the pandemic, most of our cases in Marin were among our essential workers living in certain communities like the Canal District, it's a sign that our zip code can actually be far more important than our genetic code in determining our vulnerability. Still, it's exciting to see the science being applied to COVID is answering critical questions we faced. We continue to move further from the uncertainty of the early stages of the pandemic, where so much was unknown and seemingly out of our control, to a position of deeper understanding and a wider set of tools to protect ourselves. We will continue to gain more control over our risk. Marin Public Health and our local health care providers will continue to review, 
interpret and apply the latest science to support your well-being. Thank you for doing your part.